Hello friends, this is lecture number 56 on the history of the English language. Now we are in the 18th century, uh, the mood, the general mood of the 18th century we have seen ascertainment. Ascertainment, that is the word, ascertainment. And you have seen ascertainment. And we have also seen that the situation of the language uh, that is expressed by Dryden and Johnson using one word, one adjective, and that is barbarous. Our language is a barbarous language, says Dryden and also Johnson. See that? So, the, there are many faults. Ascertainment means what? You have seen ascertainment as the meaning. One, you have to correct the mistakes and then fix it. Fix it in the desired form. Correct mistakes and fix the language in the desired form. That is what is meant by ascertain. Now, what were some of these faults? Why we have this, the problem of refining the language? Why has it come up? Problem of refining the language. Because, for one thing, there was no certainty. Uncertainty prevailed everywhere. The, the people did not know whether to use this or that. Uncertainty. But you can see now, up to Daniel Johnson's pronouncing the story, there was uncertainty in pronunciation. So, see you, you can see uh, this, you can see this one, W A C H T. So, some people pronoun pronounce it as Yachat, because C H has got catch, ch, chain, ch, so catch, yachet. But you know that it is not yachet, it is yacht. From when? From the time when Dr. Johnson, sorry, Daniel Jones published his pronouncing dictionary. So there is some certainty in that. Understand? So another reason was absence of a standard to which all, all could conform. So one is uncertainty, Uncertain, uncertainty, and second is absence of a absence of a standard. Absence of a standard to which all could confirm. We can again take this example of. Or we can again take this example. Uh, take this example. Example of. Um, uh, Daniel Jones dictionary where he where there is no standard pronunciation before that. Now we have standard pronunciation and therefore you can you can look up the dictionary and find out. If you say like this uh, a word like this now so pagan pagan you have a word like this pagan some people pronounce it as pagan but when you are when you are in doubt what can what can we do? We just take the dictionary, the dictionary is the standard. That is a standard is present, so you can do that. Another, a third fault is many corruptions going unchecked. That's the word. Many corruptions in the language. Corruptions in the language going unchecked. Unchecked. So there was nobody to check. See, nobody to say, no, they stop doing this or stop doing that. Therefore, what happened? Corruptions. Corruptions when on growing. Growing means, <laughs> it's not like a garden, the plants growing, but uh, people started using these corrupt forms of the land. That is corruption growing unchecked. So three faults you can see. Faults of the language three. First, we have, this, this is, Applicable to spelling also, uncertainty of spelling, not only pronunciation, uncertainty of spelling, uncertainty of using words, uncertainty of diction, uncertainty of different forms of verbs. So everywhere there is uncertainty. Second, there is absence of a standard and third, therefore corruption was occurring. So these were the three faults of the language. Now, as, a, as a, we have already seen, the attempt 
you can summarize it, you can say it is ascertainment and the situation has been already uh, already you have summed up by saying that barbarous land, barbarous land. So what happened is the language was steadily going down. Was and the people like Dryden and Johnson and those who were interested in the industry in, in the English language, they were looking back nostalgically. Those happy days, the glorious days of Queen Elizabeth when all the Elizabethan age, when the language received so much of improvement. Words were made, contributions made by great writers like Shakespeare. Shakespeare himself, I have already told you, Philemon Holmes, the famous translator of the Elizabeth, Elizabethan age, according to him, Shakespeare has contributed himself alone about 29,000 new words in English. It's not that he coined, but different combinations, borrowings and so on. So, a single person like Shakespeare enriched the language. And also we have seen the borrowing from different languages and so on. Therefore, they just growing like, I mean, just receiving improvement during the golden age of Queen Elizabeth reign. But now what happened? And the corruption set in, according to some historians, along with the restoration. The pre-restoration uh, English was a well of undefiled English. Well of undefiled. See? The purest, the purer sources of genuine diction. A well of undefiled English that is uh, during the time of uh, Elizabeth, uh, Queen Elizabeth, a well of, well of undefiled, defiled English. So, so therefore, Dr. Johnson in his dictionary, he took examples not, during, not from the English of the 18th century, but English of the 16th century. Because according to him, there is a well of undefiled English. Understand? The pure, the pure source of genuine diction. The pure source of, the pure source of genuine diction. So he took from that. And along with the expression, what happened is that corruption set in. That's where some historians so Dr. Johnson deliberately took examples from pre-restoration English, not post-restoration English. But at the same time, even he, he, people like uh, Swift, Donada Swift, he, according to his uh, view, restoration was an age of the classical. It was called a classical age by some other people, say like prominent among them, that is Swift. Any of whatever it is, whether classical, whether glorious, whether a period of English, uh, this way or that way, you can say. But what we find is that the attitude of the mind of the people of the 18th century to somehow get rid of all the supposed Im imperfections. That is what it is. So the all thing is geared to that. There is only one aim, one goal, and that goal is the get rid of the faults of the language and the character. Because before this already in Italy and in France, they had character their language and standardized their language. So English, of course, remained behind, you can say, much behind. So then comes individual efforts. Individual efforts, the first person to take an initiative to correct the faults of the language, that is before Dr. Johnson's dictionary appeared, that was Swift. So we can hear subheading Swift and his and his proposals. Proposals for what? For correcting and fixing the language. Swift and his proposals. He was actually, he, he, he was very serious, a serious type of person. 
conservative, as well as the language is concerned. He was known as gloomy dean, dean swift, gloomy dean, gloomy is a serious person. See, very serious persons are gloomy people. That's what people say, I don't know. <laughs> they are maybe serious persons, they also love. We have no idea about that. Now, though all those things we will leave to the psychologists and uh, Freud and people like that. So, let's, uh, let's continue with this. So, he battled against three faults of the language. That is it. So, he was a fighter. So he battled, battled against three faults of language. First one, three innovations. Is it? Three innovations. Uh, he fought against innovations. Those days, innovations here means not anything new, not finding out anything new, that is the little meaning, but here it means some kind of fashion. Yes. Clipping and uh, shortening words. For example, we have professor. When you shorten it by clipping it, you get the prof, isn't it? Prof, P R O F. So those days, for example, instead of saying taxi cab, there is a taxi. See, instead of saying the advertisement, some people used to say ad. This is even now you can say ad, ad, and then rep for for a representative. Rep, uh, so reputation, rep, rep for reputation, and for advertisement, rep for reputation. Then uh, bus, is not omnibus, you know, full form of bus is omnibus, all this, and, and also you have got a, uh, see, mob, mob, uh, bus, mob, mob means mobile. That is accepted today. No? Nobody will say mobile. Mobile phone, there is a mob. Number, mob number. Yes. So this is, is what happens when you do clip like this. The polysyllabic dignity of the word is lost. You get that idea. Polysyllabic, for example, omnibus. Omnibus. It's a polysyllabic word. So then what, what happens is, uh, if you, when you see clip and shorten it, it becomes a monosyllabic word, monosyllabic. So the transition is from polysyllabic, poly means syllabic to monosyllabic words, taxi cab, that is polysyllabic words. So he says, polysyllabic dignity of the language is lost. Polysyllabic dignity. Dignity of the language. And he click, professor. Suppose you call somebody, a meeting is going on. Suppose your professor is the president of the meeting. He is sitting in his chair and then you are welcoming. He says, prof so and so. I don't think he will, uh, he would like it. He may not say anything, but a prof. Why do you call prof? There is a policy of dignity of, for that word, professor. So you have to, you have, you have to pronounce the whole thing. Otherwise it is something like what you said, you, you are slighting him, showing uh, disrespect. So this is what uh, a shift was against. He was against this. Oh, policy will be your server. Now, of course, you can say, no, what, is, what about your mobile language in English? What do you, what do, you do? You you don't say, no? Um, to, to him, or, or you write like this. <laughs> to him. To him. So you have to read it like this. To him. To him. For you. That is? For you. See that? Suppose Dean said, would be alive today, you would come and butcher him if you are alive. <laughs> Mercilessly butcher him, means cut your throat. See, for you. Then you are there. Uh, there is another one. Uh, there, um, two, two by two. 
I'm not two by two. <laughs> so I like you are. How do you like you are? You? Uh, not the name, and a first you are a comma. You are. You are. And more than that, people have started pictorial writing. <laughs> That's the ancient days, the, the years ago, that is uh, when humanity, we can say the human being started writing. Heliogrips, the Egyptian heliogrips, then picture writing and so on. The, those days people used to uh, communicate by pictures. Now, same thing now being done today in the mobile phones you can see. Some pictures laughing, some people play this. <laughs> see, you, you, have to, you have to infer what is the meaning. Most of these things I learn. Sometimes I get a picture, I, I get uh, from students feedback like the, in pictures. I don't know what is the meaning of all these pictures. Sometimes what are five or six heads like this you see. Only this head you can see and uh, smiling. Sometimes the head you can see uh, shedding tears. That may be because of my classes. I don't know whether the students, they are tired of listening to my class and so they are shedding tears. It could be like that. Anyhow, Swift and his proposals, his proposal is battle. His battle first is against policy levels. And then second is about contracting verbs. Contra against contracting verbs. Contracting of verbs. See, for example, you know, do not. By contracting, you can write like this, don't. That he, uh, he did not approve. He disapproved of this. Especially this is what happens, you know, uh, words like disturbed. Dist. Disturbed. Disturbed. Disturb. The E is missing there. Uh, disturbed, rebuked. 18th century people used to write like rebuked. 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 So again, here what happens is the policy of big word is that dignity is lost here also. Because to say one syllable, you are to say one letter. When you say one letter, you are saving a syllable by putting an apostrophe. Yes, why should we do this? It's terrible. You can understand things easily. Because if you write like this now, so without context, so you are there. Uh, how will you read this? I, you can read it as I would or you can read it as I had. See the difference. If you can read it as I would, yes. I, it depends. You have to wait for the next word. See? I have gone and it is I would have gone. I had gone, I had gone. Listen, the full form this, of this could be, I would have gone. I would have gone. Or it can be, I had gone. So if you contract this verb like this, you have to wait for these two words. What follows next? To find out whether it is, I had or, I had or, yes. Had or what? Or would, uh, I would. Understand. So contracting verbs, he was against. Against that. You, 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 you have words like, you know, dredged, fledged, all are ED words. Fledged. Fledged. Dredged. See that? So why, why should you do this? He says. Again, here what happened is that the word is shortened. Just English is loaded with the monosyllabic words. Monosyllabic words. So it's better not to uh, shorten these words like this or contract the verbs like this. Shortening of words means nouns and the contracting of verbs he battled against. He was a staunch supporter of polysyllables in English. Sometimes I used to wonder if the, when Dean Swift read those four famous lines of Marlowe, that is uh, the exclamation, Dr. Foster's exclamation when he saw the apparition of Helen 
must miss the face that notched a thousand ships and burn the countless towers of belief. Sweet Helen, make me immortal with the kiss. So it's loaded with the, all those four lines are loaded with the monosyllabic words, means single syllable. What would have deals if, what would have he said? Then it, what would, what would he say? We do not know. Probably he might have his own, his uh, objections and justifications. That we do not know. And anyway, he was a very important person, see, during this period. He was as, in fact, you know, as important as he can say, Dryden, Pope, and uh, Dr. Johnson, and Sir and so on. And Dryden and Pope, they are not very bothered about language, as we can see. Dryden made some remarks here and there. But these are the people who actually battled against the force of the line. And the third one, so the first one is clipping, clipping and shortening. And the shortening of that he was against. Taxi is an example, mob is an example, bus is an example. Then second is contraction of verbs. Contraction of verbs. That is for example, we have got the uh, do, don't, don't, do not don't. Or you see examples like disturb, disturb. Okay. You can see that even both in prose and verse, not only really in prose but in verse also. In poetry, this may be common. And today, when you compare this and today's language, today's shortening, where is today's shortening? There is no comparison. Because there are no words. People are complaining that uh, uh, you are saying that a lot of corruption has set in, in the use of English language, mobile use of English language. You have to have English for special purposes, no ESP. You think of that, ESP, English for special purposes. So also there is, I think after five or six years there will be a book, somebody will publish a book, mobile English. Mobile English. Like that. Communicative English, mobile English, things will come up, I hope. It has to come up. Because some people don't know any, any such kind of thing. I say if I agree certain short form short forms and so. So at the end of the at the end of application notification you send ASAP. ASAP. What is the ASAP? ASAP. <laughs> ASAP. Again, I can have mobile language, computer. What is ASAP? So one day one of my colleagues telephoned me at night because his son had to um, uh, write a letter or something like that. He had some communication he had to send to his uh, uh, employer and then yeah, in that uh, communication that he received, there was ASAP. So there, that, because now it is not everybody then. I think it is about uh, three years ago. Uh, he uh, rang me up and asked me, because I am an English teacher, he, he thought that I knew, and luckily I knew <laughs> at that age. So, said so what? Eh? As soon as possible. It is not right, eh? As soon as possible. Reply as soon as possible, something like that. I, I, I forgot that. Uh, uh, exact context. So anyhow, I knew that and I said that it, it must be as soon as possible. So that's true, it's context, you know, according to the context, reply as soon as possible. So he has a B. Now, of course, everybody knows this and this is the common. So here again, this is the problem comes in. Here. This you can say it is an acronym. Acronyms are accepted in English, like WHO, ROB, DOB, so ROB, Railway or Bridge. See? <laughs> If you ask somebody, where is the rob? The robber. If somebody, they will ask him, you came to rob me. You know? Suppose these some old guards, if they don't know this. You know? Then also dob, dob, everybody knows. They talk about so, Yeah, that's okay. So the third is, of course, is some words which were in vogue, V-O-G-U-E, means popular, where some words which were in O, O among people of fashion, fashionable people, fashionable people. Now that is something like slang, 
slang verse, no? you know what is slang? Slang means inferior type of language, inferior type. For example, once upon a day, kid, when you said somebody kid, it's a slang, kid. See? Instead of, you say, no, you say, uh, what a kid you are. Fellow, it's a, that's a slang. What a fellow you are. Mischievous kids. Uh, if you say mischievous boy, that's standard use. But then some inferiority is there when you say, when you call somebody a mischievous kid. No? Isn't it? I think there is. Ah, anyway. So there are some, some such, uh, such rascal, idiots. These are all slang words. No? But now I think this has become common among friends. Because we don't ask him, you know, do you, you don't, uh, you meet a gentleman on the road and say, oh, what's time, ask him, you know, <laughs> you will get one. So, if you ask him, what is time, ask him, then you will get one. No doubt about it. So that is, these are words used by these people of fashion and the, of inferior culture. So, he battled against that. You, are, you can say that words like uh, uh, he uh, sham, band, bubble, sham, sham, band, bubble. So these are some of these words used by men of fashion, fashionable people. Fashionable people means not civilized people, but you know some uh, some people who go around uh, ch chatting and uh, doing nothing. Sitting in a bully, cutting, bully. Bully was another word, bully. Bully, cutting. I will cut you. Is that? She said, I will cut you. Uh, what does that mean? Cut you It's a bad expression. No? Yes. Because suppose your teacher, is get, your teacher gets angry with the I will cut you. Then the student uh, now will say, ah, that I will see. That uh, what, what, can I, what I can also do. <laughs> he will respond like that, right? So this, don't use such words. So he was battled against this. So these were the three faults against it. He ought to steal. Steal, that is, uh, that, uh, other steal. Periodical essays, see. So he, he ought to steal. In uh, Tatler, he was the editor then, Tatler, Tatler uh, number 230. Asking him, to, asking him to expand. That means remove all such, such words. Give a list of this. Those days there was a practice. At the end, every year, at the end of the year, a list of words will be given, and, they, and then these uh, authorities say, steal and uh, editors of periodicals and so on. They will say, uh, these words, the hundred words listed here have been expunged. Means removed from the language. So he said, do it. So he requested it. Again he wrote, he, he mentioned this in his um, uh, tract or treatise, you can say. And then he said, uh, this, uh, he, he wrote one, and in that he said, the title of that is, the, a proposal for, a proposal, just a proposal, a famous one, just a proposal. So, six proposal for correcting, correcting, ascertaining, and improving our English time. That was the title. His proposal was very, very famous proposal. Six proposals. One, he wrote letter to Tatler number 230. Then uh, his proposal, proposal for correcting, ascertaining, and improving. Our English term. So that's a proposal for a proposal for a proposal for. Is it? So the 
a proposal for uh, for correcting ascertaining and uh, uh, correcting uh, improve sorry ascertaining the English term. Yes. Correcting and improving, sorry. That is the title slightly changed. Ascertaining should come at the end. Correcting, improving and ascertaining, yes. Improving and ascertaining. And ascertaining. Here. A proposal for correcting, ascertaining and improving our English tongue. Ascertaining the English tongue. So our English tongue. I think that is, again I have to rewrite this. Yes. A proposal for, sorry. Sorry. A proposal for, a proposal for correcting, yes. Improving and ascertaining the English term because this is the proposal that has to be that has to go correctly in your mind. No? A proposal for correcting, improving, and ascertaining the English term. Yes, correct. A proposal for hmm, uh, correcting, improving, and ascertaining the English term. So that is what you understand from this is that the, the hard work done by these people. So the language is barbarous. The language has faults. Language is there is uncertainty. There is no standard recognition standard. There is uh, corruption. People are looking back with nostalgia. Those golden age of Elizabethan England and uh, language of those days, a speech language. Then we found some people say that after the restoration, corruption set in. Corruption was going unhindered. Then people like Dryden and Johnson and Swift uh, got into the arena and they started uh, fighting for uh, fighting against the faults of the language. And they clamored for a standard, a correct correction, fixing, all these things together. Uh, there, was, there was one word used in 18th century that was ascertaining the language. And then we found individual efforts. The first one is, of course, we saw Swift, as Dean Swift and his proposals. He battled against three faults of the language. One is clipping, shortening, nouns, words, generally we can say, like a taxi, bus and so on. Secondly, we saw contraction of verbs by removing certain letters, like grudged, do, not, don't, that's easy to remember. And then uh, I, I told you there's a confusion that can come up because of that is I, ap apostrophe D could be read as I had or I would. Even I should, yes. I could. Uh, was D, I could. You could, you could uh, read it like that. So, confusion. Thirdly, we saw some words which were fashionable, which were used to be fashionable people. You have inferior culture, slang, you can say, see, as a like band or bubble. And then you have got uh, words like uh, uh, cutting and so on. So, but of course, now these things are quite common here. Yeah? Then we found that the uh, Swift on his own initiative writing letters to periodical essays. One such letter is he wrote to title number 230 uh, asking the editor of Steele to expunge these words or remove these words from the official list, list of accepted words. Then another thing we saw a proposal by him for correcting, improving, and ascertaining the English term. So, this is uh, the effort to, uh, the effort, the problem of refining the language. Why do we have a problem of refining the language? Because of the faults. And three of these, uh, Swift had done very well, and uh, we will see what other people also, what are the other purposes. 
you will see that uh, for other purposes like academy, a proposal for academy, then there is a dictionary, then there are uh, grammarians, 18th century grammarians writing grammars for uh, the language and so on. So these things we will see in our next class. Till then, bye. Have a nice day. Enjoy your life.